Welcome to the Florida Gardener podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer, and today we are talking about one of the most versatile plants for the Florida landscape, ferns. They are seriously a garden ninja. Small, large, indoors, outdoors, full sun, full shade, in ground, potted, hanging baskets, there's a fern for that. Shoot, there are even ferns that require no soil at all. Plus, they are prehistoric. And this is one of the coolest things to me, you guys. Ferns trace their lineage back to the pre-Jurassic period, before the first dinosaurs appeared. This makes them some of the oldest plants on Earth. They have survived a ton. Cosmic collisions, ice ages, wildfires. I'm not sure if petunias would have made it through. Just saying. This is also why they predominantly reproduce using spores. Ferns are seedless and flowerless, and spores are an ancient way of reproducing. Okay, now you know why I'm so passionate about these plants, so let's get right into it. When it comes to full sun, there are a few that really thrive in this arena, my favorite being the foxtail fern. They are very unique. Its stems look like long fluffy tails, hence the name foxtail. They are relatively drought tolerant too. They actually hold water in underground tuberous roots, which look like little sacks. Pretty cool. The Sprenguri fern, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but it's S-P-R-E-N-G-E-R-I, is a long trailing plant that's great to hang over a pot or place in a hanging basket. It has a feathery, wispy appearance. I recommend keeping this one in some type of container as it can spread quickly. And once established, it can be difficult to pull out of the ground. Trust me, I've tried. And just as a disclaimer, the foxtail and sprengery are technically not true ferns, but I think it's safe to say that most people just consider them to be ferns. Um, But I did want to make sure to mention that. However, I do use them as ferns when designing and installing landscape. So I think they certainly belong on this list. Now the wart fern is a true fern and it can take full sun as well. It's very low growing and compact, which makes it a phenomenal ground cover plant. It has what I would consider hardier leaves with little bumps on the back, hence the name wart fern. We also have the bracken fern, another true fern that can take full sun. The bracken fern is very elegant with delicate looking fronds. This one gets a bit bigger and is perfect for a woodland themed garden. And just as an FYI, all of these sun-loving ferns also thrive in shade. Moving on to ferns for partial shade and full shade. We have a ton of options here. The Boston fern is a classic. It's iconic for being displayed on porches and large hanging baskets. While you can absolutely plant them in ground, I do think they are best displayed in some type of container because of how they grow. Their arching fronds grow up and then fall over, creating this cascading effect, which looks really neat when they are displayed in a basket or pot, even on a wall or shelf. And if you have the space, my favorite in this category is the macho fern. It gets pretty large, but that is why I love it. It really fills in a space. They also look good planted around a tree and they're really hardy. I always say, however many macho ferns you think you need, get half of that because they really do grow quickly and get big. The soft shield fern is another favorite of mine. It's pretty compact, so it'll fit in most spaces. It's a soft, delicate fern. You can't help but want to touch it. The fronds are sort of ruffly and their unique texture contrasts nicely against other types of ferns. There's also the sword fern. Now sword ferns have an upright sword-like appearance, hence the name. This is one I equally enjoy potted or in ground. And I had to include the tree fern on this list because, well, it looks like a freaking tree, but it's really just a giant fern that grows a long vertical rhizome that looks like a tree trunk, but it doesn't have any woody tissue. How cool. And talk about a plant that looks prehistoric. Put a few of these in your yard and you'll have the perfect landscape for the filming of the next Jurassic Park movie. Depending on the exact type, they grow anywhere from 15 feet tall to 80 feet tall. Now, another cool type of fern is epiphyte ferns. 
Similar to Tillandsias and most orchids, epiphytic ferns are not planted in soil. They grow anchored to other plants, typically large trees or rocks, and absorb nutrients from the rain, air, and organic debris, such as falling leaves and animal droppings. You'll commonly see epiphytic plants at garden centers attached to a piece of wood, which you can then display outside or inside your home. Two of the most common epiphytic ferns are the staghorn fern and the bird's nest fern. Oh, the staghorn fern. I once heard someone call it nature's version of a deer mount and it couldn't be more accurate. Its unusual appearance makes a statement. The large antler-like fronds definitely command your attention and will have you rushing to the nursery to buy your own. Another epiphytic fern is the bird's nest. It has rippling bright green fronds that create a rosette of foliage with a nest in the middle. It's a pretty hardy low maintenance fern. And what makes it extra unique is it swings both ways. It can live as an epiphyte, adhering to a tree or rock, but it also thrives as a terrestrial plant grown in soil like most other ferns. Now when selecting ferns or really any plant to display indoors as houseplants, we focus a lot of attention on sun and water requirements, but we tend to overlook humidity. Most ferns like a higher level of humidity than you will find in our homes. You can try to increase the humidity with a humidifier, group plants together, use pebble trays, etc. Or you can just buy plants that naturally do better in lower humidity environments. I prefer the latter because it's less work for me. And this is why the bird's nest fern is my favorite fern for interior scaping. It has proven to be the most adaptive fern inside, at least in my experience. There are others that sometimes do all right for me, such as the Southern Shield Fern, but I wouldn't recommend it because they are a bit hit or miss. When it comes to container ferns, really all ferns do well in pots or in ground. I have found that the button fern does better in a container than in ground because it is rather delicate and small. The rounded leaflets make this one fun to enjoy, but it doesn't really get a chance to shine in the landscape. It just gets lost but it looks adorable, displayed on its own in a small pot. And of course, we already discussed the Boston fern and how it's commonly displayed in hanging baskets or in pots. All right, you guys, that wraps up episode three of The Florida Gardener. We will see you next week for episode four. And in the meantime, if you'd like to download one of my Etsy garden templates or check out my social, you can access everything through my website, rootsredefined.com. That's roots, R-O-O-T-S, redefined, R-E-D-E-F-I-N-E-D, dot com. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again soon.